Hello everybody, this is Mateo and I'm meeting you back in the peaceful rest valley because you remember that bridge that was broken down when we first came through here? And it would have been super helpful if it were fixed because it would have been a major shortcut. Well, that guy just happened to fix it when we're coming back around here the second time. So, yeah, we now have a fixed bridge. Uh, after you beat Carpenter and save Paula, pretty much. But there you go, huge shortcut, very helpful. And now we can continue along and get on to Tucson back there, because we saved Paula and we have to bring her back home or whatever. Well, well, really, the, um, Happy Happy Village is kind of a dead end at that point. I mean, the dungeon and the trail to Paula's, uh, the cottage where she was locked in. Those are really the only places that branch off of uh, Happy Happy Village. So we need to go back to Tucson so that we can go somewhere else from there instead. But we still have other things to do in Tucson, actually, in order to go on to the next area. Because the passageway to the next area is kind of guarded by ghosts. Sounds kind of weird, I know, but we gotta find a way in order to get past those ghosts, otherwise they will just pick you all up and throw you out or something like that. They are too powerful for us to deal with, apparently. And we can't really take the bus, because same thing will happen to the bus. So we shall get pizza instead and try to make friends out of the ghosts. Also, it looks like they have a whole bunch of Pac-Mans at the top at the little counter there. I mean, I know it's supposed to be like a pizza with a slice missing, but just because it happens to be missing one slice, it looks like Pac-Man. So there you go. And now here we are back at the Polestar Preschool with the cat on the roof for eternity. Talk to the mother. Yeah, we get a handmade band-aid. Good, good job. Your elementary teaching stuff has allowed you to realize that that rhymes. Yep, and of course she gets in the way, but I want to talk to the dad, which I thought he was here, although I'm pretty sure she said that he was somewhere else. Oh well, he's not around, so we can't... Actually, I think he might be in the... on the second floor, and I just didn't bother checking. Oh well, we need to go see... Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I remember this. So, remember the fact that I went into the room, into the kitchen, I'll call it, or the dining room, or whatever that room is, but just remember that I went into that room, saw that he wasn't there, and then left immediately, pretty much. So I go talk to Everdread, and I'm like, Okay, I took her to a mother, but I have no idea where the father is. So I'm, I need to look around to find the father. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to cut it, because it takes me forever to locate the father. I don't know. Well, if it doesn't, then I'll just uh, continue talking. But I would have continued talking anyways. But here we have a new enemy. The annoying old party man who's going to get smashed and hammered, because he's a party man. And we will move on. Indeed. Okay, so that's a new enemy right there. Really easy, though. So, getting caught against a tree, I guess. I don't even know. And let's check back at the preschool, hopefully. Nope, passing right by it. Okay, well, I'll just tell you right now, the dad is actually in the Polestar preschool. Uh, but how to get him to show up, well, you'll see in a second once I ever decide to cut. Looking back on it, there must be something that I'm going to, but I can't really think of it. Here's the Chaos Theater. You want to remember this location and those two guys who look suspiciously like Mario and Luigi for later. And there's Mr. T. And there's the bicycle shop. You can get a bicycle there, but I really don't like to use the bicycle. So, oh well. You didn't get the town map either. It just eats up inventory space. Although, then again, the town map would have really helped me find the department store in Happy Happy Village and the hospital in Tucson. So I was kind of kicking myself at that point. And now we are cutting. We are back at the Polestar Preschool now. And you have to enter that room and approach the table or just move forward in it, and eventually the father will show up. So if I had moved like two feet forward, basically, in the game, he would have showed up and I would be okay. But... Uh, not the case, because I am dumb, and I just registered that he was in fact not here, but really you just have to walk in for him to be here. Yeah, makes sense, no. And he says goodbye and tries to follow us or something, I don't even know. But now we can leave, we can go talk to Everdread. Why he wanted us to take her to her parents, I really don't know. 
And now this random guy with a mohawk's going to talk to us. He's got something for us. Because he couldn't have given it to us earlier while we were talking to him. Let's kill this lady. Oh, she's actually a new enemy. I was expecting it to cut. Okay, well, she's kind of like the annoying old Barty man, but she doesn't get smashed and hammered. And she's just still really easy. Especially since we should have fought these guys a long time ago. I wonder if that, that guy is the one that talked to us earlier. The guy by the entrance there. Oh well, if you didn't fight Everdread, pretty sure you had to. Can't really think of any other way. Maybe, well, if you didn't fight him, you'd probably have to fight him now. But, well, he's going to give us monies. Oh boy, except I already have a ton of monies in the ATM. But I don't think I have that much money yet. Okay, well that saves me a whole bunch of grinding. I can buy all of the equipment with that. Although I feel as though we might want to use that for something else. And he also mentioned Liar X Aggregate, or Arrogate, or something like that. He mentioned Wario Jr. and, um, and the Mani Mani statue that he uncovered. So I guess that is the same Mani Mani statue that went to Mr. Carpenter. Now, where am I going? Um, I believe I am looking for the Chaos Theater. Which, oh hey, I'm actually going the right direction for once. So, let's go ahead and go on in here to talk to the manager, because the Runaway 5, I almost said Runaway, guys. The Runaway 5, uh, they've run into money problems, and they have a huge contract, but it's kind of a dead-end contract for them, because they're just stuck doing shows here, and, well, we're going to fix that with our wad of bills that we got from Mr. Everdread. Okay, and now I need to remember where to get a ticket. And I can't remember where to get a ticket. For whatever reason, in the beginning of the game, I can't remember, like, all the sequence triggers uh, that you need to do and the order of them. Like, you have to do this to do this and to do this to do this. Like, I don't remember that you have to take Paula to her parents to get the wad of bills. I just think that you can go get it immediately. And I don't know where to get the ticket. I was actually thinking it was kind of like a reference to Mother, where you can buy the tickets at the department store. However, that is not the case. And apparently I'm being confused as to which way the door opens. Yes, I would like to buy a ticket to the Runaway 5 show. Okay, that's not that much. Oh, fantastic. Oh, well then why would you even offer that? So yeah, I'm just questioning like, okay wait, she sells tickets but she's really not. What am I supposed to do here? What do I do? Well, if you remember, we actually saw the two of the Runaway guys. Uh, N Nintendo Capri Sun and Proton John, I guess. Well, any of the two, really. <laughs> but the, we saw two of the Runaway 5, rather, at the, um, and by the building, the Chaos Theater. And we actually have to talk to them, and because we have Paula with us, we're such a cool dude that they're going to give us a ticket. So, yep, we're pretty popular, we're a cool dude, and we need to talk to Luigi, because he is definitely good with the ladies. So there we go, we got our backstage pass. And now we can move on to the actual theater, because we have our ticket. But first, the guy wants to take a picture of us because we're such a cool dude, and super popular, and have a ticket to the show. Okay, so go ahead, take my picture. I think this is the first picture that we have with Paula, or maybe it's the second one. I think he took a picture after we left the cabin where she was being held. Maybe it was before. I don't, I don't necessarily remember. But, well, let's just go in the theater, and we gotta use our ticket and watch the show, because the guy doesn't want to discuss money until after the show. So, we are forced to watch this. Which, I don't know, might be interesting. So, go ahead, use the backstage pass. However, we really aren't going to go backstage. I mean, we just kind of... Actually, we do kind of go backstage, but that's besides the point. Talk to, um... Yeah, she's... Somebody's changing clothes right now. So, yeah, they don't want to be bothered. I believe that there's some NBC that we're supposed to talk to. And no, I thought that the show would activate if we went there, but again, I can't remember sequence triggers, so I'm just going to talk to people, because there's a certain person that we need to talk to. Um, no, we just... I had a girlfriend with me or something, and we're super cool, and not like that guy. And... Um... They let us in, basically. So, yeah. Is that guy, like, drinking alcohol or something in the bottom right corner? It looks kind of weird. In his two frames of animation, he moves it from his chest to, like, his mouth. They're going to be world famous, not if they, <laughs> keep on running into money problems. 
they already have like th thousands of subscribers probably maybe in the hundreds i don't know hundred thousands i mean but yeah Dude, actually i'm not a huge fan of baseball i was just spamming through messages and of course the last one that i just happened to talk to is the one that you need to talk to yes i do have a pass but somebody's changing their clothes Okay, um, and Paula is just somebody else, I guess. Wait, somebody's changing their clothes, oh no! Oh, okay, apparently they stopped changing, and she's just going to look at a bench, because that is the most exciting thing about, like, this whole room. There, no, there are no famous musicians. Okay, now she's looking at the saxophone player. But still, I mean, <laughs> she first looks at the bench, it's like, Oh my god, it's a giant rock! They accept it's a bench. But that, that was a reference to a certain abridged series. Okay. And he's going to sing us a little bit of the song. Which would have been kind of neat if they put lyrics in the song that they're going to play. But no, it's just the instrument and then them like moving around. It's supposed to signify dancing, but whatever. Uh, you hope I pay attention. Uh, well, the thing is, sir, when I was actually playing this, I... Uh, couldn't hear the audio. It's just some weird thing with my recorder where you can't hear audio when you're recording. But it does show up in the video, so it's completely fine. Um, so I was really just watching a couple of guys walk around for like three minutes or however long this is. So yeah. <laughs> but now I can actually listen to your song. At least, I think there's music. Oh yeah, there is. You can just barely hear it. Oh well. Uh, even though they're called the Runaway Five, there are six of them. So I wonder which one of them is not considered to be among the five. It's probably Luigi. Nobody likes Luigi. There we go. There's the music. Now, granted, although... Well, this is pretty awesome. It was just kind of annoying that I couldn't hear it while I was recording it. So I, just, I was just kind of sitting there with my head in my hand, pouting until it's eventually over. But now it's over, and so we can watch them walk around while there's music. Also, there's nobody in the crowd. Wasn't there like 20 people here before? Uh, I mean, look, there's nobody in those seats anymore. They all just came for the drinks and then left. Even though those must have been some pretty expensive drinks, I would think. Ah oh, well, they're lost. It's just us, I guess. Oh boy. And what about that little girl? I think that little girl just is is still waiting backstage or something, but see, nobody's here, and now they all come back! Guys, you missed a show! Good job. Good job, guys. Paid all this money, and you don't show up for the actual show, and now you come back for the show. Maybe it was just too loud, and they all really don't like the run Runaway 5. Okay, so just talk to her, she'll get out of her way, and now we can go talk about money with the guy because the show happened. Yeah! Yeah, they owe him a lot of money. Uh, I don't think so. I think, yeah, I can pay off their debt. I have this wad of bills. And it's totally not counterfeit or anything like that. Nope, not in the slightest. Zoinks! Jinkies! I don't know, yipes just made me think of that. Okay, see? Oh, it's the piano guy with the dreadlocks that isn't considered to be part of the five. That's kind of surprising, considering nobody likes Luigi. And yes, I'm just going to keep on continuing calling them uh, Mario and Luigi. It's better than calling them Nintendo Capri Sun and Chug a Conroy or something like that. Despite the fact that that's what their group channel name is a reference to, but still. I'd rather call them Mario and Luigi just because... That, I think that's what they were actually going for in the design. Like, the people who made this game, they were trying to make them look like Mario and Luigi. Also, where am I going? What? What am I doing? Oh, I'm resting at the hotel, even though I'm pretty sure I haven't taken any damage this entire episode. Oh no, I'm saving. Okay. Well, that's it for this part, and the next time, we will ride with the Runaway 5. So I will see you all then. Goodbye.